Okay, so this video is going to talk about uh, uh, chapter 51 and other things in uh, Ragnarok or Ragnarok and this kind of thing. So, obviously, if you don't have read the chapter yet, uh, also this video is going to have a spoiler. But I have already done a review for chapter 51, so you can watch that. That's going to talk specifically what happened in that chapter. This is a more um, prediction and speculation and different things about why Ragnar and Ragnarok really started from the first place and if you go back to the first uh, chapter with the Ragnar and Ragnarok we have a, a meeting with all of the guards from different pantheon from Greek, from Hindu, uh, from uh, Nordic and so on and so on and so on with different uh, pol uh, political uh, guards, different religion and so on so we have the main, the five main gods that is almost the leaders in the story of the manga. You have uh, Zeus, the high, the, the lead, the, the leader, the main leader. You have Odin. You have Shiva. You have uh, Aphrodite. Uh, that almost, that is most depicted in the story of the gods and then you have the other smaller gods that we see here and there we see uh, Parvati we see uh, Kali we see we see Durga uh, that like and we see Ganesha so we see different uh, gods um, in um, uh, but they are not as much depicted in the story as the other five gods I talked about um, and we in the start obviously show Aphrodite uh, agreeing with Shiva that they should uh, destroy all humanity because what Aphrodite says is that she thinks the humanity is dirty, they uh, pollute the oceans, they are, and the thing here with in the story of Ragnar Ragnarok is that. They are the gods in the story are very very self thinking. They don't think about other things. They think about what they think is good. They think that if the gods in the story, uh, for example, Aphrodite thinks that if they are not, if, if people are not beautiful like she thinks things should be beautiful, they should not exist anymore because they are not in her in her view and her image uh, necessary anymore. They are broken toys. They are n unnecessary things. They are fro broken toys to be thrown away because they are broken. They are not. They should not be fixed. Um, and this is when this all of this kind of thing. And that's, so the interesting thing here is the why do the gods in the story think like that? And we never get any information for. We just we start in the meeting with all of the gods uh, and Zeus sit on his dragon throne, you have uh, all of this kind of thing, but we never any, get any explanation for why the gods want to do it. Why the gods want some, they vote for if they're going to destroy humanity, or they will give humanity 10,000 years more for uh, to live, as, hum, as humans to live. Not that they're going to be 10,000 years old, but they're going to live, ten, they have 10,000 more years to live as the whole group, as humanity. And, and this kind of thing. So we start there, and obviously that different guard agreed. Obviously, the most, the highest guard agreed to destroy humanity. Shiva is one of them. Aphrodite is the other one. And then before Zeus have the time to smash the the, the his hammer, as decision, uh, Bru uh, Bruhilde uh, comes in and say, "I have a better idea. What if we use we start to have the battle between famous hum humans from history and famous gods from history to fight each other? If seven of the human win, human will live, uh, have ten more, the, ten ten thousand more years to live as a humanity, as a group of humanity in the world. If the gods win, they will be destroyed as as a group of humanity." So, obviously, to make it the fight more fair, the the Valkyries uh, transform to their different weapons. The famous weapon they would use for the, that famous part would use in battle. For example, you have uh, uh, Lubu, uh, one uh, her, 
the Iron Breaker's Valkyrie transformed to his uh, Hillebard weapon. I don't know the Chinese wo name for that weapon, but it's a uh, very famous like the double axe with a spear uh, that Lubu used. And Lubu is, Lubu is a famous for person from the Romance of the Kring uh, Romance of the Three Kingdom. Um, uh, that is is depiction of uh, like a romantic depiction of the uh, Three Kingdom in China after the Han Dynasty. And you can say that Lu Bu is some kind of um, uh, anti-hero. That he is, uh, he's from the, in the start of the story, he's the is the villain. But later, later on, when he finds his love, uh, one of the the concubine of the bad king. I don't I don't know her name. Um, uh, he start to be more uh, more soften up. He, he's not as aggressive. He's still a very a big warrior. He's a big guy with a big uh, hillebar weapon. Uh, in the story, he's a, he's a big fighter, but he is uh, some uh, yeah I, I, yeah I I call it for right now some kind of anti hero. He's like um, a, a some kind of anti hero, uh, and then obviously you have. Uh, um, What's the name? So, oh, you have you have you have famous people like Raiden, that is a famous person, a famous uh, sumo wrestler, and you have uh, 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 Sasaki. You have Sasaki, uh, the famous person that fight against Mush uh, with the Long Nodachi, and all these kind of things. So these different famous people that were fame, uh, fame fight against famous guard from the history and so on. And so we have all of this, but we never get an explanation for why the, the meeting from the first place ever started in that place. So, and we have obviously interesting factors, but different of the guards. For example, you have uh, the only of the main guard that uh, in the meeting we still not have any backstory of is Aphrodite. And Aphrodite. I think it should be very very interesting to hear about her backstory. What is the re who are who are who are she, and what who are the stone golems that is with her, and all of this kind of thing. Uh, and I, for right now, we only have like for example, we only have a more like a fan service depiction of her. But we never, we know nothing about her. That is the interesting thing, that we know have nothing. We only know that she is on the meeting, and she likes to watch uh, battles uh, from the arena, and she has her, uh, her golems, almost like, like bodyguards. But we never ever get any, like, who, who, what kind of power she have, and what kind of... Um, Things make who was the person that made the stone golem from? Was it Ephaestus that makes the stone golems for her? Uh, are the stone golems uh, weapons that she can use in battle, or the stone golem only um, a pleasure implement things for her? Is this more like that and this kind of thing? Uh, so, obviously, this thing is very interesting about all of the guards, are they are interesting that. They for have a very specific view that they really they don't really think about their consequence they have like they because they have power they they use their power in a very bad way in the story in this kind of thing and they is almost like they are like peer pressure like uh, that some of the guardians say this kind of thing because they don't want to have the the uh, rage from the other guard if they don't say what the guard say and this kind of thing so obviously so and um, obviously my my speculation here obviously who will fight who uh, against Buddha and Haiju in the in the battle number eight I uh, seven sorry battle number seven is I think will be uh, Belzebub uh, and Nikola Tesla, and then we have uh, uh, Sama Hayek, uh, probably gonna move, I think fight against Rasputin or Anubis, and um, you have uh, Nostradamus fight against Loki, 
and, and so on and yeah and this kind of thing. this is what I think what will happen in the in the battle uh, and also going to be very interesting to see all of the other humans that we have not yet seen fight but we have seen them for example the, the newest character we have seen that is of the humans is the leader of the Shinshingumi and the Shinshingumi was uh, a late late medieval uh, Japanese uh, police and the Shinshingumi so that a lot of the characters can be very interesting to see what abilities they have what tactics they will use in the story and yeah Ragnarok, Ragnarok is a very very interesting uh, manga uh, uh, interesting battle manga and it's obviously very, very, it's very different from One Piece or other adventure manga. But it's more, it's more battle manga. But it, it's interesting. I, I really like that manga. I think it's right now it's one of my favorite to uh, to read. Uh, the only thing I don't like is that the chapter takes so long to come out. Um, they take almost like two or sometimes three months for each uh, chapter to be released. And I think that. It's because of that they have to the same thing. They work with the manga. Have to work. Uh, they have to do the work with the Netflix for the anime. I think that is the reason why they take so long time. And they, at the same time, they also have a side story when they talk about uh, Lubu and this kind of thing. So I really hope they do something to make a release the chapter more quicker, that we don't have to wait. A whole a whole month for uh, for a chapter. I really hope that they make some something that we just have to wait, wait only maybe a one week instead or two weeks for get the chapter more chapter more chapter out quicker for this kind of thing. Um, because we really want to see the next fighter soon. Because obviously it's, it's very nice obviously to see in chapter fifty one Buddha fighting Hajun and we see some very cool weapon from Buddha. He's he, the, the grudge got his uh, like uh, lion uh, dragon sight that he used his newest weapon he transformed his uh, cannon uh, staff to to fight against Hajun and that is a really cool weapon so it's going to be interesting to see in chapter 52 what uh, uh, Buddha's other types of weapon will be against Hajun will he turn, will he use his big wooden uh, f- uh, seven arm statue to fight against Hajun, what kind of, how, for example, will, uh, will Buddha win or, uh, over Hajun, uh, and this kind of, or will Buddha die, will get killed or Hajun, and this kind of thing, but I think, personally, I think Buddha will win, that Buddha will use some kind of specific abilities that going to defeat Hajun in chapter 52, because I, I think chapter 52 is the chapter uh, the final chapter of their fight uh, between Buddha and Hajun, and then in chapter 52 we get started to see um, the battle between, uh, for example, maybe we're going, I don't, just speculation, maybe we'll see the next fight, fight maybe will be between Nikola Tesla and Belzebub, or or maybe some other characters that we will see, but is we have this lots of things that obviously we can always, just is just my speculation that that is the second fight, the seventh fight is that fight, and then the nine, eighth fight is between Apollo and Shi Shuang Di, and the ten uh, the ten fight is between uh, um, Hayak and. Anubis or Sama Hayak against uh, Rasputin, but uh, I think uh, Loki will probably fight against uh, Nostradamus, and and uh, so Loki. I think maybe it's like this, more like that. Loki, Belzebub, uh, and Odin are the last fighters in the story. It is in the final, the last one, but obviously the person that win. Uh, Against in the first run, for some you have first you have uh, S- uh, Sasaki defeating Poseidon, so he go continuation his fight. He continues versus the other person. You have uh, Jack the Ripper defeating Hercules. He continuation to the next next round, and all of this kind of thing. And so the, this is the person like Raiden, uh, Ra- uh, sorry uh, Sasaki. Uh, uh, Jack 
the Ripper are the two fighters that have gonna go continuation with the fight uh, because they defeat their two god Sasaki defeat Poseidon uh, Jack the Ripper defeat Hercules and the the god of continuation is uh, Shiva and Zeus that continuation in the fight so now we uh, for the second uh, for the second finals we have um, uh, we have uh, before between before we have the free one, we're still waiting for Buddha. For Buddha have joined the humans now. So when Buddha defeat uh, High June, that is the interesting thing here because first Buddha was fighting Zero, um, and uh, so so if Buddha defeat Zero, Buddha will be, get one point for humanity because we work for humans right now. But right now, Zero uh, uh, is not a god anymore. Zero has transformed to the demon High June. So that means that if High June win, they will the gods give one of the demons a point. But the demons have High June was never read, registered in the, on the list as the, one of the fighters. So originally. Uh, uh, Zero uh, Buddha have already won from the start. Already won because Zero is not there anymore. So Zero, the, the person was uh, challenging Buddha for the fight, is not longer there. He's transformed to a different person, and that makes it complicated. Because if Hajun win, that means the Hajun, the human will not lo- gonna should not lose any points. Because Hai June is not registered on the fighting list as a fighter that should fight Buddha. That was Zero was the person that should fight Buddha, and the whole fight specific, the whole fight between Buddha and Zero was very different from the original. Because uh, there was something uh, first, obviously everything changed with the list. The first list that changed was that. Adam originally should fight against Shiva, but Zeus takes his place and defeat Adam. And then, uh, so it was very. Then later on, so Buddha fight much uh, later. Uh, uh, Shiva get fight much later in the story and this kind of thing. So, and that is the whole thing with it is that it's interesting to see what happens if Buddha wins. That would then we get a hum- point for the human humans humanity. If Hai Jun wins, who will get the point? Will nobody get the point because Hai Jun is not zero. Hai Jun is a demon that that Belzebub have put in it to corrupt it, corrupt the fight. And that is the interesting thing here with, with the Belzebub in uh, Reckoning of Ragnarok is that what was the reason for that he want to find that thing? What was the reason for that Belzebub? Obviously Belzebub in the story do some kind of experiment because they have some kind of skull dogs. It's almost like uh, Faust in Shaman King in some way. Uh, in, in some way. But it's very interesting to know why Belzebub want to uh, specifically put it on Zero. What do, do Belzebub have something a uh, uh, personal grudge against Zero for some reason and obviously then we have Ares say oh there was in the story uh, uh, in chapter 51 that, oh there was th- that bastard Belzebub obviously so it's something with like Belzebub and uh, uh, and uh, probably Luke is something with these two characters that they have uh, something work together for in some ways and that is just my speculation that Belzebub and Luki work together in secretly to overthrow the system of the guards and they they really try to change it and obviously they really work together and to take the power and obviously Luki that is the brother of Odin uh, that he won and obviously Odin, uh, because obviously Luke is uh, have a, a, a giant as his father, uh, sorry mother. Uh, so they are, um, so he really. Um, they, I think that is what will happen in some ways that uh, Belzebub will use some, have some kind of a specific Belzebub and Luke have, specific have some kind of specific deals with some with the demon king with the demon leader 
uh, that they will get something if they help them uh, to overthrow the, the main guard and this kind of thing and yeah and this kind of thing so the, the fight I most look forward to see is a uh, fight with Sama Hayak that fight when he is gonna fight and the fight with the leader of the Shishingumi and uh, the battle with Nikola Tesla and all this kind of, this is probably the fight I am personally most look forward uh, to see uh, in this in the story uh, and so on uh, yeah and obviously I really really want to see uh, Aphrodite's backstory because I really want to know uh, more about her stone golems uh, who, are they some, something that she creates with her magic or are they something uh, who, who they really are this coming that is something I really look forward to um, yeah, and that's probably everything I really want to say uh, about this uh, talk about Reckoning and Ragnarok. And obviously, something that have nothing to do with Reckoning and Ragnarok is that I'm gonna do a review uh, on Friday for a chapter 20, 1024 for One Piece. And obviously, that is continuation between the battles between the five characters. And we probably can see more about, for example, Kaido. Uh, and we, I really hope that we see in One Piece we will see some uh, hybrid form. We're gonna see. I really hope that we see King's hybrid form, and to see uh, Jack's hybrid form. So it's gonna be very interesting how to see how that hybrid form will look like. Uh, so that's gonna be really cool to see. Um, obviously, um, I uh, obviously still think that Big Mom will be defeat. Blackbeard will be the person that defeat Big Mom. Take her Devil Fruit. Uh, that the Blackbeard part will come in. To uh, Vanu, similar way how they co uh, they come in, uh, in the fight with uh, Whitebeard in the Paramount War, and all of this coming. So yeah, that is what we're going to talk about um, on Friday. So uh, obviously this video was uh, to talk about Ragnar or Ragnar, about different speculation and different things and so on. Yeah, and that is everything I really want to say about all of this. I uh, hope you like it and yeah.